Hi, my name is Michael Dell. I'm a Gunawage Rono living with special needs. When I was interviewed, I had an idea for a show for people from Gunawage living with disabilities. Today is the start of that show, Walk in My World. Often, people with disabilities lead sheltered lives and their interactions are limited to caregivers and family members. I hope this show will bring you awareness of these people, their families, their lives, and their dreams for the future. Sometimes when a person like myself has an illness like I do, people don't always understand. However, with a lot of research, I discovered a lot about my illness and came to accept that I will have it forever and it's up to me to keep it under control. At 17 years old, I can remember my first distinct episode of the highs and the lows of bipolar disorder. I just wanted it to stop and I wanted to go away. I have weathered through many storms because of this illness. At times the pain was excruciating, but now with the help of family and friends I can speak openly about how it has affected me. I am not alone. You may know others like me. Your grandchild, your child, or other family member may have been born with this disorder. It does not discriminate by race, color, or creed, nor sex. I am not defined by my illness. I am a strong Ganyengahage woman of the Wolf Clan. I am here to stay. On the last episode of Walk in My World, we talked about men mental illness. This time we're going to go along the, that same line, but this time we're going to talk to a husband and w wife who is Lauren Paul. Before we got a more clinical aspect of um, what mental illness is by this time we're going to get the family perspective from a husband and wife team. They have graciously agreed to come on her, on the show today to talk about her struggles that she faces every day. I should also mention that uh, her husband Eugene is also here. Thank you for coming on today and talking about this very sensitive issue. It's my pleasure. Maybe you can start by just explaining from your perspective, Lauren, what chemical imbalance is. Okay, it just means that I have certain chemicals in my brain um, that or I lack chemicals in my brain that um, make me act in a certain way how, if I'm not medicated, um, like misfiring in a, a machine. I can't describe it any better, but um, it's the same across the board, I guess, with all of the other illnesses. Um, people lack a certain chemical to make them even. This is why I have to take mood stabilizers and antidepressants. If you don't follow a regimen of your medication, does that mean that you'll fall into crisis immediately or will it be a couple of days after? Um, if it's one, one time, one dose, no, I'm fine. Okay. But if I were just to completely stop within a few days, I'd be with, I'd be high, 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 or I'd be low, low, low. Obviously, there's some warning signs to look, uh, look for, to know that it's coming. 
if I forgot to, to take my medication, there's warning signs that, that your body sends to you? Um, yeah, if, if it's going to start out, it's usually going to start out in a high, a manic phase. Okay. And uh, there's less need for sleep. I have a lot of energy, uh, very enthusiastic, overly happy, um, just everything. Off the, everything's off the board. And then you know very well after that happens, you're going to go down into a low, low depression. After that unfortunate episode happened, uh, can you go to the clinic here in town, or is it uh, is it a big trip to the uh, to the uh, Montreal right away? Preferably, in my instance, I had to go to the Montreal General and I had to be seen by the team there of the psychiatric um, care uh, emergency. And at the time, they admitted me immediately. And they have to observe you to see what medications you're going to respond to and adjust the dosages. So you stay there, they adjust the dosage, and then you can come home a uh, short, short couple of days after? Not necessarily. They won't let you go until you're stable. So we're talking 48 hours to maybe whatever it takes? Not necessarily. Every person is different. And in an instance of bipolar disorder, um, it can take more than a week or so there are different degrees of bipolar disorder, and there are also two types. One is less severe than the other. In me, it took two and a half weeks for me to get stable, and then I had to be followed up once a week by the psychiatric team. If you don't, if you don't mind, can you uh, explain a little bit, like you were talking about, uh, you'll get very, very high, and then very, very low, what happens when you get uh, very, very high? I have like boundless energy, uh, little need for sleep, a lot of spending. Um, I just want to accomplish everything there is to do in the world, take on a whole lot of projects. Um, just go, 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 nonstop, and talk, and talk and argue, get argumentative. How did uh, bipolar disorder limit your life? Well, I lived with a lot of lows and highs before I was diagnosed. The first time I recall, I wanted a military career. And I had to come home from basic training because I hit a real low, real low. And after that, it, it, it worsens as you get older. I was only 17 at the time. So little by little, I got better on my own. But then I got high. And then it evened out. But as you get older, if you're not medicated, the highs and the lows get worse. So I wanted a military career, OK? I couldn't have that. I wanted a college degree. I couldn't have that. Um, I'm still trying to get a certificate in journalism. Um, there's a lot of things I couldn't do in my life. And it's not because I'm a lazy person. It's not because I lack drive. Eugene, when she was going through all that, uh, how did you, like, what was your feeling? Were you in a state of, uh, panic uh, when you found out that she had this, this, this disorder, like, oh my God, what do I do next? I want to stay with her, but how, how, what do I do to support her? Well, you know, I was, uh, I was there watching her go in, in her manic phases and watching her do things and, uh, you know, 
I, I would get called at work. I'd have to go home just to take care of things, you know. So it, it's uh, um, it, it took a lot of personal energy, personal uh, uh, patience. Uh, it, 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 took, it zaps a lot of your energy because you don't, you don't know what to expect next. You don't know what's going to happen next. You're uh, scared to leave the house. You know, you, you tend to say, well, I better stay here today. Just take, take the day off and stay home and keep an eye on her. Uh, and, and that's, you know, it, it, it does zap you. It takes your energy. It, it makes your mind wander and, and think of the worst uh, and hope for the best. How did the, the community of Ganamwagi treat you when, when when they see you like this? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It wasn't very nice. Once I realized the things that I had done, um, you have no um, con you have no idea of consequences when you're doing these things. So afterwards, a lot of people that didn't understand didn't treat me very nicely. However, the people that did understand um, treated me just the same, and they were pretty good about it. When, when you were going through that period, were you able to get some services here in the community of Ganawage, or you had to go out right away and then be, be referred here for some services after? Well, I was lucky. Um, when I was discharged, I used to be seen once a week by the uh, psychiatric team at the general. And after a while, I got followed up by um, a senior psychiatrist in his 70s who was very, very knowledgeable in the medications. So I was very lucky. He took me from, I can't even imagine, uh, I can't, rather, I can't describe the state I was in to a healthy state of mind once again. You know, I've got a great deal of respect for this man, and unfortunately, he's no longer with us. Uh, but he, he, he brought you, he brought you to the, the point uh, where you are. Healthy. Healthy. Yes. So, do you have, do you have good days and bad days? with bipolar? Well, in my case, I have a, an extreme case of bipolar disorder. Um, my highs and lows, I have the rip, rapid cycling. In one day, I could go from s the high gamut of happiness and then in the evening be sad and crying. So this is why I take mood stabilizers. Um, to, to keep me even, even mood, an even mood. You took um, all your services from outside the community, but is there enough services within Ganawage for people with your condition? Oh, from what I've seen, yes. There are many that exist. And um, here at Community Services, had I not had the great, um, um, backing of the Montreal general staff, I'm sure they would have been more than good here. But it just so happens that's the way things fell into place. So, so uh, you, you were speaking about your uh, pit before. Can you, can you elaborate uh, in terms of what role he played for your, your, your dog? I think just about everybody used to see me in the community walking with this wolf dog. He was uh, part wolf, part husky, and um, he had his birthdays in the Eastern Door. And since we don't have any children, he was kind of like our kid. Well, yeah, more than that. And he was always there, and like for moral support, just about everything. And um, people in the psychiatric community are wanting to get bills or laws passed to have animals as 
companions or helpers um, for people with disorders like my own. So he was a great deal of um, comfort and support, you might say. Even though you're on a good uh, path, is there any kind of support that you, you still need to help you maintain that good path today? Mm -hmm. We um, we talk a lot, and um, I do see a, a psychologist, um, Louise Dessertine. She used to be um, employed here at Community Services. She's now back in private practice, and that's um, psychotherapy, and that's excellent. I Even people that are the most well-adjusted people, I should say, could benefit from uh, psychotherapy. And um, that is excellent. That keeps me kind of grounded. I feel it's important to know, for the community to know what, what role your husband, Eugene, is playing all this. I mean, he's at um, day one, he does that, uh, and he's out helping the community, and he's professional, professional life but when he comes home. This is a husband and wife team, so what role has your husband Eugene played uh, throughout this whole ordeal? Well, a great deal of support. I'm very lucky, very lucky that I married a very understanding and supportive man. Other men I know have gone and just gone from the marriage. But there, I guess there was enough there to keep us together. He's been my support. He's been my everything throughout this whole ordeal. And I just want to add, it was just, it was a little embarrassing because he's in a very public role with his job and his extra, um, extra things that he does out of the office, his social activity. So, you know, he's a well-known person and within a small community. But um, he, he had to do everything generally just about while I was not well. Okay, Jean, for, for you, for you, when uh, you found out that your wife had, had this, uh, this condition, uh, like she said, most people would make a, a choice. What was that choice for you? Well, uh, you know, I, I stood beside her, um, uh, and I did my best to find out a lot about what bipolar disorder uh, consists of, the symptoms, the, the uh, what happens, uh, and then every time she went to see the, the, um, the team in Montreal, I, I, would, I went along with her, and I would sit there and listen to the feedback that uh, they would get from her, and they would give to her, and, uh, and I, I had a pretty good relationship with those uh, professionals in, in, in Montreal. Um, but no, I've, I've, I've learned a lot. Uh, you know, it's uh, made me a lot more smarter about uh, uh, disorders like that. How would you say the community as a whole treats people with uh, bipolar disorder? Well, uh, you know, every, everybody has their, their I guess, their uh, um, opinion about, about it. If they don't know what it's about or if they don't know what it's about, uh, some, some people feel uh, they'll stigmatize people that have it, and some don't, then uh, they'll understand it, and they'll, 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 uh, they won't ostracize a person if they, they really understand. When I was putting this... Uh, show together. Um, I was very careful in terms of what uh, terminology to use uh, so that it would be appropriate and uh, you and your, your wife would feel comfortable coming to answer these questions. So I really took uh, a lot of uh, extra care in putting this show together. So I hope the community would uh, learn from it. Do you, do you feel that 
everybody in Gunawagi that has this type of uh, challenge gets labeled uh, bipolar, uh, schizophrenia, you know. I, I, I believe there's a certain amount of uh, labeling that, that, uh, that people give to those, those kind of people. Um, you know, I've met a lot of people that, that have that disorder uh, within, within our community. And uh, like I said earlier, I've, I've learned a lot about it. So I was able to, to talk to people and, and kind of you know, um, um, understand that you know, they may have, may have a problem. Um, and as far as those labeling, I, you know, I, I still, I, I still use the phrase that no, there's, they have a disorder. There's a disorder. Uh, maybe a long time ago, they used to use the word crazy, uh, stupid, or whatever, or have all these other phrases that they used to use. But after you know, learning a lot about it, you know, I, I've, I've learned to, uh, to approach it and call it uh, for, for what it, the proper name is for it. So now. How has the community treated you now that you're on meds and everything's back to normal? Um, like I mentioned earlier, there were people that had seen me <clears throat> and just have a certain opinion of me. And, you know, there's the ridicule and, um, like, being ostracized and such, but... Hey, what can I do? That's the way they look at me. Um, I can't change them. I can only change the way I react to them. Do you think uh, we need more education in Gunnawaga in terms of uh, workshops, seminars for this special population? Most definitely. Uh, like I said, I've met so many people, uh, you no know, professionally or on. Uh, as friends, and um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of services that are are, are out here at uh, at uh, KSCS, and you know, uh, a group, uh, a support group for for uh, people with bipolar or schizophrenia would be great. Most definitely. You no, know, to get those people mm -hmm. together to help them, and some of them will not come out of the house, will stay home, and will not uh, just because of the way they feel they are, are scared to come out in public. And if they could uh, you know, come out to a support group and sit there and talk to people and, uh, and feel better about themselves, it would bring their self-esteem up, it would uh, give them their confidence, uh, and, and they won't be sitting at home uh, and was scared to come out, come out of the house and, uh, and they'll, they'll be, they'll be uh, given the opportunity to participate in whatever activities are going on within the community. So uh, how, 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 do you, how do you both feel about, uh, um, you know, people that um, may have, have this men mental challenge, whatever it may be, but um, they, 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 they want to work? Because I've, I've seen it in the past um, where, where they get the label that they cannot work because they have this um, mental dis men mental disorder. I I believe uh, people that have the disorder can can work, uh, maybe not to the, the the degree as as other people do, but they still have the opportunity to go out there and and to to. Uh, uh, you know, support themselves uh, to go to work and to to be occupied. You know, uh, like it says, a lot of people will. The first fear they have is to come out of the house. Uh, they'd rather stay home or stay in their own little comfort zone. Um, but they can they can come out and they can uh, work, if not full time, part time, uh, just to, you know, just to say that they are part of the community and contributing to the community and to themselves. So to help them build their self-esteem? That's right. What about uh, family members or anybody that ha have, you, uh, have you come across that have this type of disorder? Well, uh, my, my advice to them would be just to, to give uh, that, that family member who's, uh, 
who has a disorder all the support that they can and be very patient, uh, learn all, as much as you can about the disorder and, uh, and not to, not to, to um, leave that person at home. Have them come out, come out, you know, and, and, and come out in public, enjoy life, uh, you know. What can the community do as a whole to better support people with uh, bipolar disorder and all the different disorders that, that are out there? There's a long ways to go towards the education, the stigma, t taking the stigma away, <laughs> sorry. Um, we have a long ways to go because people are still thinking in backwards terms because there's not enough education out there. I'd like to add something else. With this disorder, a person burns a lot of bridges because of bad activity. And a person, when, like myself, that was in a manic state, will do a lot of off-the-wall things, burn, uh, lose friends, act horribly, uh, unspeakably sometimes. So, um, sometimes the community doesn't understand that, that when you're in one of these uh, states of mania, you're not thinking about the consequences, or you're not thinking about your family, you're not thinking about anything at the time. It's just happening. Uh, a person doesn't choose this. You know, if I had life to do over, I would choose not to have this. This is no blessing, believe me. It can happen to anybody, and it not, doesn't necessarily happen at a younger age. It usually hits later on in life. It, it, it peaks out. Thank you for both coming today and shedding light on this topic. Uh, my pleasure. I hope we've gotten the message out properly, and I want to thank you, Michael, for this opportunity. We've come to the end of another episode of Walk in My World. If you have any comments or questions, you can email me at walkinmyworld.yahoo.ca. Ona. You could see on this graph here, uh, very simply, uh, four different types of mood disorders. Uh, the first one you could see here, number one, is uh, the common major uh, depression. This exists in about 5 to 10 percent of uh, uh, psychological conditions um, of the population, sorry. Uh, what it basically uh, you have here is the normal mood range up here. And uh, so you have fluctuations in stress levels as well as in your mood. Uh, and then you could see a groundward spiraling a, which then uh, hits sort of bottom, and this we call a severe, uh, an episode of severe depression. Uh, this may last for uh, at least uh, three weeks, and then uh, gradually subside uh, with the interventions uh, of either psychotherapy uh, support or um, or with the, and or with medication. Oftentimes, cognitive behavioral approaches are very effective. Uh, along with uh, antidepressant medication. The second one we have here is called dysthymia. Okay, now that's a big word. Uh, we had trouble spelling it ourselves, D-Y-S-T-H-Y-M-I-A. Uh, what you see here, the difference is in the normal mood range up here. Uh, the person who has dysthymia tends to be up and down, but never really reaching a normal level. And so it's, uh, it's a long-standing mild form of depression. Sometimes these individuals will also experience a major uh, uh, episode as well, but uh, generally these individuals within the last year are experiencing more sort of uh, gloomy, depressive days than uh, happy days or good days. Uh, the third type here is uh, often referred to as bipolar. Uh, disorder and here we have uh, again in the dark area here the normal mood range 
which through childhood and adolescence may be sort of within the normal range. But then for some unexplained reason, this individual uh, mood level uh, increases actually very, very high. The person feels very elated, very happy, is on top of the world, and in fact is a little too manic. Uh, meaning that this individual has ideas of conquering the world, buying, uh, spending a lot of money, uh, somewhat out of control, and then followed by a crash, which is, again, below the normal mood range and all the way down here, and followed by this erratic sort of up and down kind of flow. The last one is, uh, number four here, is cyclothemia, uh, which uh, basically is a milder mood swing than the bipolar, but you could see it's slightly above the normal range for periods of excitement and elation up here, and then slightly lower when they're depressed. But you don't have that erratic uh, up and down uh, that we see in uh, bipolar disorder. So this one is uh, characterized by uh, milder mood swings um, than uh, the others, uh, that the bipolar. What is driving uh, on a biomedical level uh, a lot of this mood is two neural messengers in the brain. And one of them is called dopamine, which is responsible for our high activity level. And secondly, serotonin, which is the other neurotransmitter, which is responsible mostly for our mood, our happiness, sort of speak. More than 14% of all Canadians have a disability. For Aboriginal First Nation Canadians, there are 33% of people living with disabilities. People living with disabilities are subject to exclusion, poverty, and isolation. There are higher rates of depression, suicide, violence, and abuse for people with disabilities. We know that for Aboriginal Canadians with disabilities, all these rates and percentages are even higher. Statistics according to Independent Living Canada. You're watching Gahnawage's Mohawk TV on Local Channel 4, local television covering all aspects of community life. Now we'll go to Zewade Rorege.